military humanitarian intervention is when civilians are under stress, when they are starving or under attack, and the international community, maybe the United States, decides that they need to go in and help these people, and that in order to do that, they're going to need the military for logistics or for protection. The responsibility to protect is an international norm. What it basically means is that it is the responsibility of governments to protect civilians. And that if they can't do that, that it's the international community's right and responsibility to intervene in order to help those civilians. The human rights community considers it an incredible evolution of norms. On the other hand, this can be considered a violation of sovereignty. I mean, who gets to decide if somebody's going to come into my country and intervene because I'm not taking care of my people? There's definitely a balance there. Humanitarian interventions vary widely. You can have a natural disaster, in which case you're basically bringing in medical supplies and food and water. In a conflict zone, you may have to be really protecting civilians from combatants as well as providing for their basic needs. Those sorts of interventions can be a lot more complex because you have to determine whether or not you're going to get involved in the conflict in order to start saving people's lives. A classic one was in Somalia where the United States intervened because people were starving. They thought they were intervening in a famine. When they got there and they realized that actually the causes of the famine were warlord conflict, it quickly started to escalate. This is the infamous Black Hawk Down situation where in an effort to take the fight to the warlords, one of our helicopters was shot down. Some 18 Americans were killed. After that, the idea of going into a humanitarian intervention was just not very palatable politically in America. It led to reticence to get involved in the horrible genocide happening in Rwanda. But we have also done humanitarian assistance in the Balkans. We've done all kinds of disaster assistance. Deciding whether or not to conduct a humanitarian intervention is not easy. You have the sovereignty issue and you have to think about what are the root causes of the crisis. If it's a civil war, now you're sort of blurring the lines between a humanitarian intervention on the one hand and peacekeeping on another. And do you have international authority to do that? So you have to think about the politics. The second thing you're going to have to think about is how hard is this going to be? How far away is it? This is just basic military logistics. One of the other considerations is how long are you going to stay? People always talk about exit strategies, and they're easier said than done. Another thing to consider when you're thinking about doing a humanitarian intervention is whether it will be unilateral or multilateral. You definitely have more legitimacy if the UN has decided that this is an R2P situation and other countries are going to get involved and help you. That said, it complicates things. I mean, it's much easier to just do things by yourself, especially when you have the kinds of capabilities that the United States has. Humanitarian intervention, disaster relief, our military has been doing this for years, but they haven't really considered it as sort of their core responsibility. However, they get called to do this all the time, and so there's a lot of controversy inside the Pentagon about whether or not they need to be organizing, training, and equipping, and preparing to do this sort of a mission as a primary role for them.